Like the harsh and snowy climate it's set in, Pokemon Sword and Shield The Crown Tundra is a DLC add-on designed with the most hardcore Pokemon players in mind. It puts open world exploration and legendary Pokemon front and center, taking full advantage of the base game's best innovation, wild areas. But while it succeeds in being another entertaining addition like the Isle of Armor before it, its weak story is similarly short-lived, and its exciting legendary hunts end with classic grindy encounters that will have you praying to Lady Luck. The second half of the Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion pass takes you to an icy mountain region filled to the brim with powerful pocket monsters and frost-bitten senior citizens. Like the Isle of Armor DLC, the Crown Tundra is one giant wild area, but it makes much better use of its open world sandbox by cramming it full of legendary Pokemon to track down and secrets to discover. You might find yourself solving a series of riddles to track down some legendary giants or following footprints to find an elusive goat Pokemon. Though there's only a few hours of legendary hunting to be had in total, it's definitely some of the best content in all of Sword and Shield. The main story of the Crown Tundra focuses on Calyrex, a psychic-slash-grass-type Pokémon with the awesome and disturbing power to possess humans and use them as meat puppets, and also the power of growing crops. After losing both of those powers and roaming the world as a forgotten deity for generations, you're entrusted with restoring Calyrex to its former glory. Though the story lacks any real drama or surprises, it does manage to make Calyrex an interesting character even if the little guy is kind of creepy sometimes. Your other partner throughout the journey is Peony, a wacky adventure crazed former gym leader. Peony is an entertaining tour guide and bursting with personality, but the storyline and relationship between him and his daughter Peonia feels underused. Instead of tying into the larger story or themes around Calyrex, the father-daughter pair basically just makes some jokes about how dads are annoying, which causes them to feel somewhat out of place in this legendary quest. Rather than railroading you straight to a linear main quest, the Crown Tundra offers a more open format with dozens of legendaries to chase down in whatever order you choose. Apart from the primary quest line, there are a few fun guided legendary expeditions that will account for most of your time in this DLC, like hunting a trio of legendary birds in various parts of the Galar region. Now this looser formula pairs perfectly with the open concept of wild areas, granting a greater sense of exploration than one might expect from Pokémon. Unfortunately, the traditional structure of catching legendary Pokémon doesn't do this exciting new method of finding them justice. Since the Crown Tundra mostly focuses on legendaries, you'll spend a lot of your time throwing Pokéballs at opponents with extremely low capture rates. And in classic Pokemon fashion, you'll watch them break out again and again and again, which is a sour way to conclude their otherwise entertaining hunts. Now, this won't be a new feeling for any experienced Pokemon player or Pokemon trainer, but it gets frustrating faster here when legendaries are such a large part of this DLC. Thankfully, the Crown Tundra also brings more than 70 returning regular Pokemon, including welcome additions like Aerodactyl, Jinx, and Dragonite. As with the Isle of Armor, this expansion doesn't fully solve the problem of an incomplete Pokédex, with over 200 past Pokémon still missing in action, but it does add enough to make capturing all the new and returning ones quite alluring. One of the main draws of the Crown Tundra is Dynamax Adventures, an awesome new game mode that seems to draw inspiration from roguelikes. Now this mode acts like a boss rush of max raid battles. You're randomly assigned a Pokemon, paired with three teammates, and have to fight through a series of Dynamax battles with opportunities to swap and upgrade your Pokemon as you progress. Now at the end of each adventure awaits a legendary Pokemon, which can be captured if you manage to defeat it. The great thing about Dynamax Adventures is that it actually presents a real challenge since you aren't able to rely on your own powerful Pokemon to carry you through to victory. And since your team is only allowed four feints for the entire run, you'll have to play smart to have a shot at the legendary that lies in wait at the end. With so many legendaries available through this mode, there's plenty of reasons to return and fill out your roster.
Pokemon Sword and Shield The Crown Tundra is another fun DLC that offers more cool Pokemon to catch, an awesome new game mode in Dynamax Adventures, and a surprising amount of discovery and secrets. Its weak story, grindy encounters, and modest amount of content are offset by the fact that it nails open world exploration and the thrill of hunting for legendary Pokemon, even if it doesn't break a whole lot of new ground doing it. For more reviews, check out what we thought about Pikmin 3 or our Watch Dogs Legion review. And for everything else, IGN.com.